Hi, HU. Um, so excited to be able to have the opportunity to lead worship with you guys. Um, I think this is a cool opportunity. Getting, getting to watch everybody else doing it was really neat, and so I'm glad that I'm able to participate as well. Um, there are just a few things that I wanted to uh, touch on, kind of for the theme for today. Um, being in quarantine, kind of being isolated like this is, can be really challenging at times, um, and it can make us feel very alone. Um, and I think one of the things that God has been showing me uh, over and over again is that we are not alone and that in fact he is he is with us and so I wanted to read Psalm 23 and uh, Psalm um, 46 uh, just to kind of talk about this idea of God being with us so Psalm 23 starting in verse 1 the Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I lack he lets me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside quiet waters he renews my life he leads me along the right paths for his name's sake even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. In Psalm 46, uh, God is our refuge and strength, a helper who is always found in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not be afraid, though the earth trembles and the mountains topple and into the depths of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with its turmoil. There is a river, its streams delight the city of God, the holy dwelling place of the Most High. God is within her, she will not be toppled. God will help her when the morning dawns. Nations rage, kingdoms topple, the earth melts when he lifts his voice. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come see the works of the Lord, who brings devastation on the earth, who makes, he makes wars cease throughout the earth. He shatters bows and cuts spears to pieces. He burns up the chariots. Stop your fighting and know that I am God, exalted among the nations, exalted on the earth. Yahweh of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Joining me today is my sister Mariah. She's going to be singing with me um, as we worship. Before he spoke creation, the God of heaven knew our name. Formed in his reflection, we are his glory on display. In his heart is good, he is always kind. With a cross he proved, he is on my side. God, no matter where we go, we're close to the Father's heart. And though we stumble, He will not let us fall. We are the Lord's, and He will never forsake His own. are the sons, we are the daughters of God. His love he lavished on us and called us children of the King. In his love and kindness he chose the lowly and the his heart is good, he is always kind, with a cross he proved, he is on my side. We are the sons, we are the daughters of God, no matter where we go, we're close to the Father. We are the Lord's and He will never forsake. 
forsake his own. We are the sons, we are the daughters of God. speak louder than the truth remind me that I belong to you when I can't see past the dark of night remind me you're always by my side when the lies speak louder than the truth remind me that I belong to you I can't see past the dark of night Remind me you're always by my side When the lies speak louder than the truth Remind me that I belong to you And when I can't see past the dark of night Remind me you're always by my side We are the sons, we are the daughters of God No matter where we go, we're close to the Father's heart And though we stumble, He will not let us fall we are the Lord's and He will never forsake His own. We are the sons, we are the daughters, we are the sons, we are the daughters of God. His face shine upon you, be gracious to you. Lord, turn His face toward you and give you peace. Lord, bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you, be gracious to you. Lord, turn
his favor be upon you in a thousand generations your family and your children their children their children may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations your family and your children and their children their children may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going and your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family and their children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming in your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you Good morning, guys. This is Dr. Emberton. I am actually Zooming from my office here at home on campus. Uh, sometimes some of you have been through uh, the President's Home for different meetings, or maybe you've attended events here. Um, but as you walk in to the left, there's a, a glass office area. And so I'm at home working, just like most of you are at home studying. Uh, this is Sunday morning for me. It's April 24th or 25th. I think it's the 25th. And like most of you, I also attended uh, my church online today. And I'm getting used to that experience. We have an amazing worship team uh, at Emmanuel. And so they lead. And then our pastor, Denny Miller, does an amazing sermon. Uh, his sermon today was very uplifting to me and encouraging to me and a reminder uh, that I need to study the Ten Commandments again. Because uh, he asked us before we started to write them down. And I got about five of them down before he said stop. So that's my homework. Uh, welcome, and I'm so glad you're here today. Uh, I am going to do a very brief message for chapel, um, but I want to start obviously with a welcome and update. Uh, the days are finally turning warmer for those of you that are not here in the immediate Huntington area, and the trees are beginning to bud, the flowers are beginning to grow, which means the weeds are beginning to grow. Uh, so we're working on all of that, but it does look beautiful. All the fountains are on. Uh, and so that's pretty, and it makes it, uh, I guess, more uh, appealing for the ducks and geese because we have had our share uh, this week. And if you don't know around the president's house, sometimes because I have that long uninterrupted bank, I usually have several sets of baby ducks or baby geese uh, that are hatched along this area. So it's always sweet to me to watch. I also have a bird that keeps returning to my front porch and uh, she has established a nest under my front porch. And so I try very hard not to disrupt her because I know how hard she works. The campus staff are still here working, uh, but mostly from home. We have a very skeletal staff, whether you're in Arizona or Randalia or here in, in Huntington proper, uh, we have a very minimal staff that's here every day. We try to rotate out to where we don't expose one another to too much uh, 
uh, lack of social distancing. So we're very conscious about that. Um, but we are continuing to work so that we can provide you amazing services. Um, just want to remind you that virtually you can always access the financial aid office, the registrar, the business office. Um, if you need student advising, your faculty or key people are available for you, as well as student success, our writing lab, our library, all of that is still open for you. Forrester Care for uh, maybe a, a doctor checkup or possibly a register for counseling. We have those opportunities very much available for you. Uh, student government is still meeting. They meet quite often and I've had the privilege of zooming in uh, just to provide some input for a couple of items that they had had on their agenda and to also ask them some questions and get input from students on certain events. Student life also continues to meet uh, and plan activities and so I know that they're working on some upcoming events for you. Our board of trustees just uh, completed their spring meeting and yes, they did Zoom. Uh, we had almost 100% attendance. It was great. Um, uh, in such trying times, I really need their support, their input, their feedback, uh, and they care so much about you and the mission of the institution. And so we want to make sure that we had some very robust meetings for them as well. Uh, most of the questions around the hub are being answered by other people, but I will tell you because I live on campus, uh, I get to hear them early in the morning. Uh, as they uh, trade out their demolition bins, uh, but also I get to drive through every night and kind of sneak in and peek at the progress that they're making. Uh, for those of you that re uh, had a chance to ever see pictures of the hub back when it was first constructed over 50 years ago, um, it reminds me a lot of those pictures. Uh, now that it's opened up and you can actually see through all the windows or the back areas, it's just beautiful. I can't wait for you to experience that. So they're making great progress and we're excited. Well, I chose to talk today on a topic called In the Midst. And when I was looking at that, I thought about that's kind of a, an archaic word, in the midst. But actually it meets the middle or the center or in the ethos of who and what we are. There was a song when I was in high school called Stuck in the Middle. I think it was Stuck in the Middle with You. Uh, it was a crazy song. A guy was talking about there's a clown on one side and a joker on the other side, and then I'm stuck in the middle with you. Well, that's not what I'm talking about today. Um, but sometimes that is where we put God. We've already put our bookends, our right and our left, and, and we're in the middle and we're in a jam. And so we're trying to squeeze God into that. Um, but I'm really trying to talk about something bigger. Um, you know how many of us love Oreos. Um, now, I've had to get used to this double Oreo thing. I don't know what that is really, but the old-fashioned Oreo cookie uh, had two chocolate wafers on the outside and then a cream filling on the inside. Each of us eats Oreos differently. Sometimes you pull the both ends off or twist them off. Sometimes you dip them in milk. Uh, sometimes you just take a big bite. But the middle is supposed to be the surprise. Um, it's that filling. And unlike the song I told you about stuck in the middle where you're neither hot or cold, the center there is kind of that rich spot that you're aiming for. But sometimes people don't really care about the middle. I think about the old fashioned Tootsie Roll where you could get the candy off the outside and then when you got to the inside, it was a chocolate kind of gooey uh, part of the candy. And many people really like it. Some people don't like it. Uh, and so maybe the middle wasn't exactly what they wanted. But when I think about it today, being in the midst, I think about being in the very center of our being, what is within us. I'll use another food analogy because I think right now all of us have extra time to think about food. Uh, I've never cooked so much in my life, <laughs> but maybe your mom or you or your dad or some of your grandmother or somebody, your brother, sister, somebody in your house, maybe it's just you and you're like me, I cook way too much. Um, but I think about creme brulee. Creme brulee is that dessert that I love that kind of has a caramel top. And once you get inside of that, it's this wonderful cream sauce. I love it. It's one of my favorite desserts. But it's also kind of like jumping in a swimming pool. Doesn't matter if you jump in um, uh, the low end or the deep end, or maybe you jump in a lake or you jump in an ocean. And once you are submerged, 
it's that incredible feeling that you feel that you're part of something much bigger than you. Well, God has always been in the midst of us, and I thought a good place to start would be in the past. It says in John 1, 1, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And the reality is, is God has always been a part of our story. Whether we've accepted him as our personal savior or whether we're just a bystander and watching God work in an amazing world, he's always been here. He's always been a part of our story. He also tells us in Revelation 22, uh, 13, that I am the Alpha and the Omega which is the first and last letter, you know, of a string of alphabet. But the reality is he is the bookends. He is the beginning and the end. I don't know if you ever knew um, there was a story written called Footprints, and it's really about um, someone walking along the beach, and there are two sets of footprints. And at some point, there's only one. And the author of the poem writes and says, well, I don't understand God in my worst times. Uh, the impression was it was just me making it. What happened to you? And God very gently reminds um, to the author of the poem at the end that in those times, those footsteps weren't yours. They were his. He was carrying you through that time. I don't know if you know about the lady that wrote the poem. Her name is Mary Fishback Powers. And she wrote the poem in the Great Depression. She also had lost her mother at six years old and lost her husband later to a very crippling disease. She didn't claim authorship of the poem until much later in her life, but because someone found an earlier draft of her poem, I think it was maybe in 1939 possibly, uh, she was able to substantiate that she was the author of the poem. In the end, it says, he whispered, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you. Never, ever. During your trials and testings, when you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. I remind you that all things still work together for good. Romans 8, 28 tells us this. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. God also is in the midst of our current life. In Deuteronomy 31, 6, it reminds us, be strong and of good courage and fear not, nor be afraid of them. For I, the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will never fail thee, nor forsake thee. Psalms 46.1 says, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. So reminding that not only is God a God of the past, that we can look at all the victories and things that he's done, but he's our very present help. Right now, he's our help. And then the Holy Spirit in John 16.7, Jesus says, nevertheless, I, I tell you the truth. It's expedient for you that I go away, but if I go away, the comforter, if I don't go away, the comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And we know that the Holy Spirit is that very present, real aspect of God. He is God in us and fills us. God also is our future. And he tells us he's our future. Um, the very first time when God interacts with Moses and Moses is supposed to go back and tell the people who God is. Um, and he asks God that, how am I supposed to tell him? And God gives him a name and he, he I guess, scribes the name and realizes it's a bunch of hard sounds that are hard to say together. And, and we've attributed the, the name Yahweh. But it says, he answers him and he says, I am who I am throughout all generations from the beginning in the end, that goes back to the Alpha and Omega. Well, I want to remind you, not only is God present in the past or he's present in the current or will he be present in the future, but through this period of disruption in all of our lives, our lives still have purpose. And I want to talk to you about that today. God knows every event 
that is happening to us. He's not caught unaware. He's not surprised by this stage of our life. He doesn't say, whoops, I gotta get the eraser out. I've gotta change this part of your story. He knows this. And it is a part, however disruptive, of the plan for our lives. And we may not always understand it now. Maybe we don't see it. We see the glass darkly right now. But there will be at some point we either we will understand it or a generation will look back and say, aha, that was God, what God was doing in that time. I also want to remind you, he is still very present in your life. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Psalms 3 reminds us, and this is one of my favorite uh, chapters, trust in the Lord and do good. And he will give you the desires of your heart. I know right now you're thinking whether you're a graduating senior and you're going, but he doesn't understand the desire of my heart was to finish at school. Or maybe you're an a incoming freshman and you've just spent part of a year with us and you say, I don't understand, Lord. I know you led me to Huntington University, so how could this happen? Or maybe you're a graduate student or a a student in our doctorate program that you're thinking, but I chose this because of this opportunity and Lord, how can this be your plan? Trust in the Lord and do good. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Just want you to know that we're praying for you. We're here for you. I always give you and you've probably so sick of me telling you this, but I, I want to make sure one more time that if you don't have my cell phone number, you have it. It's 260-224-3621. I want to hear from you. I want to see pictures of you on Facebook if you're a Facebook person. I want to still engage in your life. And from time to time, we are still trying to send out communications. But mostly that's happening through social, our social media accounts now. Post back. Let us know how you're doing. Contact us. Reach out. Take advantage of all the people who are still uh, engaged in your life, whether it's for academic needs or personal needs. We know that we love you and we care about you. I'd love to close in prayer uh, and then uh, hopefully get to see you soon. Lord Jesus, I ask you that you would continue to watch over all of our faculty, our staff, our students. Lord, watch over their families. Watch over the parts of the country or the world that they live in. Protect them from harm, Lord. Help them to navigate a new normal for where our lives will be. Lord, help us as we continue to plan for the future. You tell us you have plans for us, and so we continue to plan, Lord, whether that's pre-graduation plans or, or plans to return and enjoy campus or to enjoy an experience with our, our programs or our faculty or our staff or other students. Lord, help us. Help us to continue to be that light for you in this very present darkness. In your precious name we pray, amen. God bless you, foresters. And again, I look forward to hearing from you or being part of you soon. God bless.